Good morning, guys, or good afternoon, whether you're joining me from the present or the future. Welcome back to another Future Fight Vanguard video. Uh, today, we're going to be covering the new Nova Grappler standard deck. This is actually our last of the four decks um, of our first uh, set of, since the reboot. So we're just going to be covering the last deck for those of you who've been waiting to see it. Um, one announcement um, before we get into the video is... Of course, I'm going to be making a second channel soon. You guys have heard about this a probably a crap ton if you've been watching all my videos. Um, so I'll be announcing that either tomorrow or Tuesday, I'm making a video on it, kind of sitting down and telling you guys what that's all about. Um, I am still going to be doing the Card Fight Empire channel like full time. Um, this is just a kind of like a transition so that I can do YouTube more full time as well. Um, by having two different channels, so uh, if you guys are going to be interested in that, just stay tuned, uh, watch the video, follow me over to my other channel as well, um, and that would be great. Uh, so, with that being said, uh, let's get right into the deck. So, we're going to be talking about standard Nova Grappler today. So, um, getting right into the deck, uh, we have kind of like an unorthodox uh, Nova Grappler build. I'll say that right off the bat. Um, but really just with our grade two lineup. Um, but let's talk about, um, you know, why we run our unorthodox build. So first of all, um, let's talk about our grade threes. Uh, our first grade three is Perfect Riser. Um, so let's talk about the imaginary gift, first of all, of Nova Grappler. The imaginary gift of Nova Grappler is Excel. Uh, so Excel, whenever you um, ride a grade three unit, you actually get to put an Excel marker um, on your field and then the that excel marker gives you an extra front row rear guard circle so um excel uh promotes a kind of aggressive play style just because you get to have multiple attacks like more attacks than usual um whereas normal clans only have you know three attacks that they can do because they have one two three slots uh nova grappler has more uh front row units because of excel um, and more front row slots, and then they also have abilities that restand the rear guard. So you can end up attacking for like six attacks or something like that during the turn, which is really, really crucial to wearing out your opponent and uh, kind of depleting their hand. So um, then we have our main grade three, which is Perfect Riser. It has two Vanguard abilities. The first Vanguard ability is when it attacks Counter Boss 2 and choose two of your rear guards in the front row and stand them. Really, really, really good ability because. Um, if your opponent doesn't check the damage trigger, it is a lot of attacks for them to deal with. And most of the time you're restanding units that have a good amount of power by themselves. Um, so it's hard for your opponent to deal with if they're either at five damage or they just keep taking damage and they don't get a damage trigger. Um, then the second ability is when this uh, when uh, when it, this unit's attack hits. Uh, if you have a card with Riser in its card name in your soul, counter charge one and one of your units gets plus 5,000 power. So something that I really like about this ability is this ability allows you to fight against force clans really well. Because if you don't have a booster, um, you can uh, you can just attack into their rear guards and when you hit their rear guard, you can actually counter charge one um, so that you can facilitate your counter boss for the next turn as far as the first ability. Um, it basically makes the, if you hit during the same turn um, as, um, using the first ability then essentially the first ability is just counter boss one in cost which is way better than counter boss two um but also the choosing a unit and getting 5k also helps you a lot just because sometimes you attack a rear guard with perfect riser and you wouldn't be able to hit with your rear guard but after you give it 5k you can hit sometimes so that's very very good then we have four battle door fighter um, this is our backup grade three, but also really good on the Vanguard circle as well. Uh, this card has two abilities, a Vanguard skill and then a Vanguard rearguard skill. Uh, so the Vanguard skill is activation once per turn, counter boss one and soul boss one. And then you choose one of your units and during the battle that this unit attacks, um, your opponent, if, if, you're, if your opponent is gonna call a guardian, uh, he or she cannot call unless they call two or more cards at the same time. So basically what this means is that you counter boss one, soul boss one, and you select one of your units. And for that battle that that unit is attacking, um, your opponent cannot guard unless they want to guard with two or more cards. So they can't just guard with one card. So um, this is actually very useful as a combo with Burst Riser, because uh, when your opponent's at five damage, you can counter boss one, soul boss one, choose Burst Riser as your target and put it in, in an Excel circle. And then Burst Riser will attack your opponent's Vanguard. They have to drop two cards 
and then when uh, the Vanguard attacks, Burst Rise will restand itself and be even more powerful, and then your opponent has to give you two more cards for this. So it, let's say that you have like a full board, um, and you've only like ridden once, uh, and you, so you only have one front row Excel circle, then you attack um, one, two, three, four, five times, and both times with Burst Riser, your opponent has to give you two cards. So instead of like potentially giving you five cards for five attacks, um, like if they could guard everything with one card, um, instead of giving you five cards, they actually have to give you seven cards at the very least um, to block your attack, which is really cool. Then its second ability is when this unit attacks a Vanguard, if you have three or more rear guards, this unit gets plus 5,000 power. So really, really good because it can turn into a really good rear guard as well. It's a 17k base rear guard by itself. When you place it on the Excel circle, it's like 27 if you have the rear guard requirement. So a lot of times that's kind of big for your opponent to block. And a lot of times they just end up taking it. So very good. Um, moving into our grade two lineup, this is where it gets a bit unorthodox. Um, I actually don't run high powered riser custom in this build, um, just because. Let me go through it and explain it. Um, for those of you who know what that card is, you will know and you'll be like, well, "What? Why isn't he running high powered riser custom?" So um, the reason why I'm not running high powered riser custom is because of Kagero. So. Kagero is the most popular matchup, and it's actually the worst matchup for this deck. Um, and it, you're more likely to come against it, like, really, really often, because Kagero is pretty much seen as, like, the best standard deck right now. In my opinion, it is the best standard deck, and then closely followed by OTT. But if you're playing Nova Grappler um, and you use High Power Razor Custom, not only will your um, unit either not hit or your, bla uh, your Battle Riser in the back will get sniped, um, your... Like, you will be using, it's only useful during the grade 2 turn, basically. Um, anytime after that, my high-powered riser custom is not really useful. So I'd rather just run cards that have higher power to attack um, to fight Kagero um, or Burst Riser, which means that when it's on an Excel circle, it's also doing stuff by restanding on its own when my opponent decides to, like, starve me for Counter Blast or something like that. So we actually don't run high-powered riser custom. So our first um, grade 2 that we run, like we were talking about before, is for Burst Riser. Um, this card synergizes really well with Battle Door Fighter, but it also synergizes really well with Perfect Riser because you can attack with all your rear guards and then attack with uh, Perfect Riser, Counter Boss 2, Restand 2 cards, and then uh, use the skill of Burst Riser to Counter Boss 1, Soul Boss 1, and Restand itself. So um, you can actually get, you know, 7 attacks um, just by yourself when you have Burst Riser on the field. Um, so that you can, you know, restand and get stuff done. So Burst Rider skill is when your Vanguard attacks um, and it's on the rear guard circle, you can counter boss one, soul boss one, stand this unit. And if the number of cards in your opponent's damage zone is four or more, this unit is plus 3,000 power. So if it's in an Excel circle, this unit becomes 22K. So against uh, another Nova Grappler deck or OTT that actually makes a number on their Vanguard, um, a magic number, uh, as far as... Um, Royals and Kagro, it doesn't really change anything, so getting the 3k doesn't really, you know, affect anything, uh, because they're 13k base and that's a different number. Um, but yeah, moving into uh, our next raid 2, we have 4 Cut Bowler. Um, Cut Bowler says, uh, continuous Vanguard Rearguard skill during your turn. If you have another hero unit on your field, this unit gets plus 5,000 power continuously. So, um, we run the hero engine in this deck just because it really helps us um, be able to just play front rows and have them be powerful enough to attack our opponent. Um, so we try not to play back rows so that um, against Kagro, we don't have to be, like we can shut their Nahalem down and we don't have to like fight them as hard when we're playing less cards to the field because those cards have high, higher power and can attack them. So we do just run four cup bowler. Um, something really cool in the early game is if we ride and then we call two cup bowlers and we happen to have them, Cup Bowler will like see each other and they'll both be 14k base which allows you to you know I like it a little more than um, Iron Killer because the, even though they both have their conditions for gaining 5k Iron Killer has to attack a Vanguard to get 5k and Cup Bowler just gets 5k continuously so if I need to attack a rear guard for 14 I can't um, like a 10k rear guard then we have four Iron Killer Iron Killer skill is when it attacks a Vanguard if the number of rear guards that we have is three or more, it gets plus 5,000 power. So basically the same skill as Battle Door Fighter um, on the rear guard circle. 
and it can be pretty good. Um, honestly, we, do, we're, we only run it because we want to be able to attack our Vanguard without a boost and uh, be able to still hit them. And then moving into our grade ones, we have four Riser Custom. Uh, this card is very, very good. I like this card a lot, um, especially when I'm like pressuring and going for game. Um, that's when I like this card the most. But it has two abilities. The first one is an Act Vanguard once per turn ability. It says choose a card from your hand and put it into your soul. And this unit can attack on the first turn and it gets minus one drive until the end of the turn. So basically what happens is you ride this card on top of your starter. You draw a card from your starter and then you can shove a card into your soul and just attack your opponent's starter on the um, first turn. So a lot of times if I have it and I'm going first, I do end up using the skill if I don't have like, if I have something in my hand that's not super, super important, like a front trigger or something, I just shove it into the soul and attack. Um, just because one, it builds soul. And then two, it also, most of the time your opponent just takes the attack and uh, gets an early damage off on them. So that if it's a trigger, you can get it out of the way. Um, if your opponent blocks it, you're getting early um, cards from them before they even ride to grade one uh, cards from their hand. So it is very, very good all around. Um, I don't think that it's bad to use the skill at all uh, because you're either sacrificing a card from your hand for damage from your opponent um, or you are sacrificing a card from your hand from a card from your opponent's hand. So both are worth in my opinion and um, yeah, I will probably always use the skill if I go first and I don't have like super useful cards in my hand. Um, then it has a rear guard ability that says once per turn when your other rear guard in this column stands, then you can stand this unit. So. This card helps when you're like uh, pressing for game because when you know that you're on perfect riser and you're gonna restand columns and stuff like that, um, or you're gonna restand certain cards, you can put a riser custom behind it, which would be a nice 8K boost to it. Um, and you know, if you're placing, um, you know, like let's take the scenarios of you placing it behind a grade two or a grade three. If you're placing riser custom behind battle door fighter, you'll be making a 25K column and then when Battle Door Fighter restands from Perfect Riser, so will Riser Custom, and you can attack for 25 again. Um, Burst Riser will attack for 17, then 17 when it restands, or 17 and then um, 20 when it restands if it gets three from its own skill. Cub Bowler can attack for 22, then 22, and Iron Killer can attack for 22, then 22 to Vanguard. So um, very, very good, makes good numbers against your opponent especially if they're playing Nova Grappler or OTP just because of the 12k base power. Um, and yeah, moving on. So we have four Rocket um, Hammer Man. We really only run this card, not really for the skill, but because it's a hero and we are running the hero engine. So we need things for Cut Bowler to get its plus 5k. So in the early game, you want to increase the chances of Cut Bowler being able to get its power no matter what. So we do have Rocket Hammer Man. Its skill is on the rear circle when it boosts the hero. Soul Blast 1 and it gets plus 5,000 power until the end of the turn. So um, I have used this card in some scenarios to like end games, uh, but it's really when my opponent's at 5 damage and I have an unboosted hero on the board that I play this card. Otherwise, I just kind of hold it as 10k shield is very useful in the hand. Then we have 4 Jet Riser. Um, Jet Riser's skill is Vanguard Rearguard Circle. When your other rearguard is placed, this unit gets plus 3,000 power until the end of the turn. This is actually my favorite grade one in the entire deck um, just because a lot of people sleep on this card and underestimate this card but if you play this card and then you play two rear guards uh, literally this card becomes 13k and it becomes able to hit force um, force units like force vanguards and so that's very very useful and you can like kind of play around with that to your advantage and um, get attacks on your off of your opponent that you normally wouldn't get if you had other units on the board because they wouldn't be picking up to hit um, so yeah, that's important for Jet Riser. Then um, topping off our grade one lineup, we have one Death Army guy. Uh, we only run one just because it is a cool attacker at 9k, uh, 9k boosts on grade one. But we don't run more than one because it doesn't have any shield value. And if it's just sitting in our hand, we want to use it as an attacker. And I don't want more than one to be sitting in my hand at any time, just because I've experienced playtesting with more than one of these and they somehow always get in my hand when I don't need them and I need like 10k more shield to survive and then Death Army guy is there and he's the reason that I can't block. Uh, so yeah, we only run one of him. Um, also, sometimes to note, we can ride, um, if we have this in the early game, we can ride to 9k and then a draw card from our starter and then our opponent has to ride into an 8k because that's all that they have unless they're also playing Nova Grappler then they can ride a 9k Death Army guy. But if they're playing anything else, they have to ride into an 8k or 7k Vanguard. 
and attack you for a one to pass and get a trigger to do damage to you or they also have to um or they also have to play a booster so you're making them commit cards from their hand and then also um death army guy when you ride it you're not worried about them giving you a damage anymore because if we were running like high powered riser custom that's when we were always wanting that first damage so that we could use high power razor custom skill um you're using the counter boss but this time like we can have zero counter boss going into turn two and not even care um so then for our starter we run one battle riser uh, battle riser when you ride it you just draw a card pretty self-explanatory the reason that we still run battle riser as our starter and not the other one is because of perfect risers uh, second ability having to have a riser in the soul um, we don't always ride Riser Custom or Jet Riser as our Grade 1. Sometimes we ride Rocket Man, and we don't always ride Burst Riser as our Grade 2. Sometimes we ride Cup Bowler or Iron Killer. So it's good to have a Riser in the soul at all times, just right off the bat, um, so that you don't have to worry about Perfect Riser's second skill being able to go off ever. Um, then for our triggers, we run 8 Stand, 4 Draw, and 4 Heal. Or sorry, uh, 8 Front Triggers, not Stands, sorry. Um, this used to be kind of like the equivalent of stands just because we have um, effects that stand our cards now. So we don't really need uh, stand triggers. Plus it would be like way too broken in this format, I believe. So instead, um, something special that they gave uh, Excel clans is actually front triggers. So front triggers are this new like light purplish uh, kind of trigger. And when you check it, you get 10,000 power to your front row. So it's very, very good on offensive and defensive because on defensive, it allows you um, to take a damage from your opponent, get 10k to your front row, and then your opponent can't just like, just like if you hit a trigger normally, they can't just switch their attack target to your rear guard um, because it's not big enough. And so a lot of times if you hit a front trigger, if your vanguard can't be hit, then your rear guard can't be hit by the same thing because they're around the same numbers. So front trigger on the defensive protects your rear guards, which is really, really useful. And then front trigger on the offensive um, facilitates your multi-attacks and all of that stuff. Uh, it gives 10,000 power, and if your opponent doesn't check a damage trigger in response, uh, it can be a really rough time for them. Especially if you check like doubled front trigger or something like that, you're just like a huge sack. Um, then we have four Twin Blader, which is our Sentinel trigger of the deck. Um, it is our draw trigger that is also a PG. So if we happen to damage check it, uh, we get a draw trigger that gives 10,000 power to Vanguard and we draw a card. But if we happen to drive check it, uh, not only do we get a PG to our hand, but we drew a card so that we can uh, use it to PG with. So uh, very, very good. Still counts as a Sentinel. And then it says uh, Guard Circle when placed. Choose a card from your hand and discard it. And then choose one of your units and it cannot be um, hit until the end of the battle. So you can PG Vanguard or Rear Guard with it, which is really, really good because when you're playing against Kagero, sometimes they swing into your Rear Guard with Dragonic Overlord. Um, and you just want to block that nonsense. Um, then we have four wall boy as our heal trigger uh, basic heal trigger from the V series uh, Not much to say about it. It has 20k shield That is worth noting because it does save you a lot of times if you check a heal trigger and you're at five damage um, Going down to four damage can often save you from the next turns onslaught of attacks because not only do you have a 20k shield in your hand But you're also able to take a damage whereas you weren't before when you were at five so a lot of times checking a heal can uh really save you and that's why i don't run the build where they run like eight front triggers and eight draws because i want my heals in there uh, my heals have saved me from a lot of situations also if we're unable to um, counter charge sometimes using perfect riser um, because our opponent won't ever let us hit sometimes uh, checking a heal can act as a counter charge because we can heal off of a counter boss to damage and then take a damage and we have you know yet another damage to counter blast um after that so let's get right into the games here we're running, um, or sorry, we're fighting a Royal Paladin for the first deck that we're fighting. Our opponent rides um, and attacks us. They don't get a trigger because we rode a Death Army guy, so they couldn't hit us with our with their 8k. And uh, see, this is like really important that we did this, just because since our opponent couldn't damage us on the first thing, we're able to take their Blaster Blade um, with a crit and kind of like not be at four damage, which is what we would have been at before had we had to take Vanguard attack. So um, we're attacking, we get a heal trigger. We do activate um, Perfect Riser's ability to counter boss two and restand. Our opponent attacks, gets a draw trigger, and then uh, gets another draw trigger, which I was kind of mad about because he drew two cards when he got his first draw trigger, and then he put, he showed me the second card and then put the card back and shuffled and checked the draw trigger. 
Um, so I was like kind of salty about that because all he had to do was when he showed me that that was, would have been his second check, all he had to do was keep it and it wasn't a trigger. So for him to shuffle it back just because he had to show it to me, I was just like, that doesn't make sense. But sometimes people on area do a lot of things that don't make sense. Um, so we play rear guards from our hand. Uh, we attack for 19 to his vanguard. He guards with two cards. We soul blast attack for 30. And then we attack rear guard um, for, with perfect riser. He guards for two to pass. We check two cards, we attack for 17 and then 19. Um, he guards with a heal trigger. Um, he rides Alfred and then he plays the card from his hand. Uh, he, he attacks for 31, he checks the crit. And then um, we, we guard with double PG and then a um, double PG and a heal trigger. So we attack with Vanguard, he PGs it. And then we attack using the skill of um, of Rocket Hammerman and it actually clutched us the game just because it was able to get that plus 5,000 power. Our opponent wasn't able to guard it um, and that just ends up being game one that we won against Royal Paladins. Um, so basically like, you know, as you guys have been seeing, you just want to force your opponent into Nova Grapplers like kind of theme or the way that they win is kind of death by multi-attacks. Uh, so you want to force your opponent into a situation where they are unable to block just because well, really, you want to get them to um, five damage as fast as possible because when you get them to five damage against Nova Grappler, it's like very, very dangerous for your opponent to be at five damage against Nova Grappler because then you have to guard all the attacks without any um, chance of checking a damage trigger unless you are expecting a six damage heal, which is unlikely. So, um, so then we're fighting against uh, Roypod and again. Thankfully, we uh, six damage heal, or sorry, we uh, not six damage heal, but we. Um, heal on our fourth damage so that when he goes into grade three we don't have to be at four damage because that's dangerous um then we do attack with um perfect riser getting multi-attacks off and then he attacks with vanguard we take it and then he attacks our rear guard so uh, because he's attacking our rear guard we are just like putting down triggers to the board just so that we can hit him and pressure him more and then we attack for 25 um so he was forced to guard with the last card in his hand so we pg his vanguard he checks a critical trigger, so the we guard the column that you put a critical trigger on. And we actually top deck a burst riser, so we're able to attack for 19. And it's perfect because we only have one counter blast, so normally we wouldn't be able to use um, perfect riser's ability uh, to restand. So we did use burst riser's ability to restand, and then we just attack for 32 to his vanguard, and he has no more cards in his hand that can block it. So we end up winning game two against Royal Paladin as well. Um, I will say though that like during that final turn. Like top decking burst riser was like probably the best thing that I could have top decked because I had like one counter blast and he intentionally um, passed his turn on his last attack to not give me two counter blasts so that whatever I played could not restand um, and that he would only have to guard two attacks, which was smart on his half until I drew check or sorry until I drew burst riser. So yeah, so we're playing against OTT this time. Uh, we ride, we attack. Our opponent takes the damage. Um, our opponent rides and then like decides to rush us, so they're attacking us for eight, then nine. Uh, then we take a damage, we heal. Uh, we r like rush on our own too, so we play Death Army Guy and uh, Friend Riser. We use the effect to um, counter boss Soul Blast Restand, and we attack for 19. We also got a heal, so that damage was instantly um, re refunded to us. Um, so our opponent checks a draw trigger when they attack Vanguard, and then we get a draw trigger as well. Uh, we go into Perfect Riser, we attack for 17, our opponent gets a trigger. We attack for 22, our opponent gets a trigger. And uh, we get a front and a heal, which is pretty cool because uh, we're still able to hit our opponent and then our opponent hits a draw trigger. So I was like, what the hell is going on here? Um, we would have been able to finish our opponent hadn't, if they hadn't checked like three damage triggers. Um, but our opponent attacks rear guard with Silent Tom and then attacks rear guard again and then attacks rear guard again. So they don't want us to have counter boss, so we're fine with that. We're just attacking Vanguard. I'm kind of hoping for a front trigger. We attack for nine to rear. We attack for 24 to van and then 22 to van. So our opponent is getting less and less cards in their hand. Um, they actually play the deer and uh, they get two crits that they get to stack on top of their deck. And Imperial Daughter is, uh, this is her second time being on the rear, on the Vanguard circle. So she actually has 15k in a crit from her own skill already. So they attack my uh, rear guard for 40. I perfect guard the Vanguard. And then they check double crit, putting it all on Tom. And since I could take three damage, I just decided to take it. So I had a draw trigger and two fronts. Um, 
I call a full board and then I just attack um, and that ends up ending the game just because my opponent can't take all those attacks that are five damage now and they realize that they gave me too many counter blasts and uh, probably the smartest move would probably just be attacking my rear guard um, after he realized that the three crits wouldn't be able to kill me um, but if he did that then it wouldn't have killed me and then I possibly could have just like done the same thing where I top decked a burst riser and then I had the burst riser to play to the field and it would have been the same result. But yeah, that has been uh, the three games that we will play for Nova Grappler. So that has been the Nova Grappler Future Fight Vanguard video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video. It helps a lot more than you guys think. And be sure to subscribe to keep up to date with the channel. Uh, so you can subscribe and click the bell button next to the subscription button. Uh, the bell button gives you notifications on when our videos go live. You can check out our social medias down in the description below, which is our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you are interested in supporting the channel a little more than liking and subscribing, you can check out both of our options for that in the description down below. The first one is our Patreon, uh, which has like a bunch of bonuses like, you know, joining the Patreon uh, channel Discord. And, you know, we have contests, uh, deck advice, all that stuff. Um, I answer questions, deck uh, help questions and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that or if you're just interested in just supporting the channel, you can head over and check that out. Um, but if not, and you want to support the channel in a different way, we actually have Hard Fight Empire merch, uh, merchandise as well, hoodies, um, t-shirts, all that stuff. And you guys can check that out on the merch site down below um, as well. And with that being said, this has been Josh from Card Fight Empire, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace, guys.